Hello and welcome back to Gapy's Garden. It's time for our August fig update. All right, let's start here with our in-ground figs. We've got our Desert King, which I put in the ground just this past spring, and look at how much it's grown. It's well over six feet tall, probably getting close to seven feet, and it has produced three really awesome Breba figs, which we just ate last weekend. It does have some main crop figs on it, although this variety requires the fig wasp to produce ripe main crop figs. So those will likely fall off. And we already have had several drop over the last week or so. So I don't expect we'll get any main crops off this, but considering how much it's grown, we should have a really great Breba crop next year on the growth that it's put on this year. Here is our other in-ground fig. This is the Laterula or Italian honey fig. It's also known as, and this is the one that actually died all the way back to the ground over winter. This whole middle part was completely dead and still is. So I'm just gonna cut this off here before too long, but it has put on actually quite a bit of new growth from the, the ground here in the last couple of weeks. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave it here. I was gonna remove it, but I don't have another plan for putting a fig in this spot until next spring. So I'm gonna give it one more chance and see what happens this winter. If it dies back all the way to the ground again this winter, then I'll probably remove it and put another variety here. So over here by the greenhouse are the rest of our figs. There's the greenhouse there. All the figs are out here getting some sun. We'll start here with the ones over here. I've got one, two, three, four, five figs over here and I've got this shade cloth covering the containers because it's been really hot and sunny here for the last few days and I think the pots were getting overheated because they're black and they're pretty much in full sun in the spot so I'm hoping the shade cloth will help the roots not get too hot. So this first one here is the Tacoma Violet. We didn't get any Brabas off of this one but we've got quite a few fruits here and hopefully we'll get a few of those to ripen up. And next here we've got the Ronde de Bordeaux. So this one has been having a lot of problems with the leaves just dropping. So you can see this branch here is completely leafless and so is this one here. And it's loaded with figs. It was really late to produce any figs which was surprising. Last year this was my biggest producer but this year I'm not sure what's going on with the leaf drop, but that is kind of concerning. So we'll see if these fruits ripen up for us this year. So next we have the Marseille Black VS. This is one I started from a cutting last year. We've got a few fruits on here, and this one here on the bottom looks like it's getting soft. So this is, for some reason, I don't think it's gonna ripen, it's not plump or anything. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, but that's probably gonna end up dropping. These other guys are still pretty firm, so we'll see. This one also has been dropping a little bit of leaves. You can see they're just turning yellow and dropping. There's a little bit of brown spots on there. So I'm not sure what's going on with some of the figs, but I've been having that problem here the last month or so. And then next we've got the Brandon Street Unknown. We do have some leaves yellowing here as well. So that one is just, would, would have dropped off itself probably in the next couple days. Um, I'm not seeing any pests or bugs or anything on them, so I'm not sure what's going on. But this one has quite a few main crop figs you can see on these branches here. I didn't get any Breba figs off of any of the varieties over on this side. And this last fig over here is called Stella, and it's still in this tiny pot that's probably maybe not even a gallon. So I do need to up pot this. It's been on my to-do list for a while. There's no figs forming on this one. It's still a pretty young tree, but it's definitely probably getting root bound. So I do need to work on that this week. 
And here we have the rest of our figs. I've got two figs that are in these green self-watering containers, so the roots on those probably don't get as hot as some of the others. This one here is the Figo Preto, and the figs on this are just um, pretty loaded, and they're getting, they're starting to get fairly big. Nothing that's getting really soft yet. It probably has another month or two before we'll see any ripe figs. And we do have a little tiny fig here, so that is not gonna reach maturity. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that guy off. So that's what I've been doing on any figs that I see that are really small. This one here is also pretty small. So that will help the energy go into these larger fruits. And we've got, let's see, a few more over here. So I'm gonna pop that off. One here, pop that off. All right, so that should help these other guys ripen up. Now the other one I have in the green container is the Burgessot Grease. So this one here has not as many figs as the other one, but it's got a fair amount. And we do have a few tiny figs that I'm gonna pop off of here. There's some more on this branch. So I have another Burgessot Grease here. This one has just one branch. This is one I started from a cutting off of the other one I just showed you last year. And we've got actually two, three fruits on these, this one that's actually pretty good size. Um, we do have the branch is forking there. There's no fruit on that lower branch, but hopefully we'll actually get some on this branch. Now this one here is the Olympian. And this one is also having some leaf problems. You can see this leaf here is yellowing and will probably fall off here before too long. We've lost most of the leaves that were on this branch. There's just two left on that one. And again, on this one, we're looking pretty thin on leaves, but it still has quite a bit of fruit on it. So we'll see if we can get those to reach maturity. So this is one of the varieties that was at the, the fig tasting and it actually did fairly well. And I've decided after the tasting we attended that I'm gonna plant this variety in the ground next spring. So this variety seems to do really well in the ground here. And then here we have the Nero 600M. So I did get to bring one brave of fig to the fig tasting that we went to off of this tree. And this variety actually did pretty well. So I was surprised. Um, how well it did compared to all the other 16 varieties that we had. I think it came in around fifth or sixth place. But the leaves on this one are kind of curling a little bit. They haven't been dropping like some of the others. Oh, it looks like there's a spider making a nest in this leaf. So that could be a problem. Um, I'm not seeing any spiders or anything on the other leaves but I'm not sure what's causing that leaf curl. But we have lots and lots of fruit on this one as well. Here's a, a little fruit that I'm gonna pop off here. So here we've got the white Madeira, and this one here is one that's kind of, the branches are just going really wide and it's not growing very straight. So I do have a little bit of support here trying to train it to grow a little bit more towards the center, but it doesn't really seem to be helping that much. I did bring one Braba fig off of this to the fig tasting and it did very, very well. It actually got second place out of 16 of all the figs we had. And I had to split that fig eight ways, so people only got to try a little tiny bit of it. If we got a bigger tasting of it, it might have even got first place. but. Hopefully, maybe next year I'll get more off of it and we could try a bigger sampling. This is one I got from somebody last year that was supposed to be a Kathleen's Black, but it turns out that it's not that, and it could be a Laterula, but we aren't positive what it is. But it does have quite a few fruits on it that might ripen up this year. And it is getting a little bit of that yellowing on the leaves, and a few of the leaves have, have dropped as well. Now this one here is Robert's Golden Rainbow, and this one probably has the biggest fruit so far for the main crop. And this is a larger sized fig, I believe, so that makes sense that they'd be a little bit bigger. But we've got quite a few here, three on this branch, two more over here, 
and three more down here. So I'm really looking forward to trying this one. Now here is the JFE Black Madeira. We've just got one branch here, or one stem, coming out of the pot, and it's forked here and has one fruit here on this side and then three on the branch on this side. And I think we have lost a few leaves, but it still has quite a few left. It's not really putting on too much new growth, though. So over here we've got three cuttings that I started this year. The first one is the white Madeira. That's the one that's growing kind of wonky and sprawled out that I just showed you. I decided to take a cutting off of that one to see if I could get this one to grow a little bit better. I do have this stretchy green tape stuff that is kind of trying to get these to grow closer together. And it, I think it's working a little bit, but it does seem to want to sprawl out. And I've found that to be fairly common with this variety. So hopefully we can get this to be trained a little bit better. And then we've got the Ronde de Bordeaux. And this one is, it was a fairly small cutting, but it seems to be doing well. It's putting on a little bit of new growth there. And then I've also got another Ronde de Bordeaux here in this container that probably could use uh, a, a bigger pot, but we've got a little bit of growth there some nice looking leaves. So those are all the figs we have in the fig yard this year. I'm probably going to be putting some netting around these to keep the birds out once they start getting a little bit closer to ripening up because we do have quite a few birds around here with all the, the berries and stuff we have in the yard. I do have some netting around the blueberries and those are just finishing up producing so I'll use that same knitting on the figs. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.